Hey boardies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon. Today I'm going to have a setup, play, and review for the game Azul Queen's Garden, a game by Michael Keesling, a person who, like myself, has played the game before breakfast. Yes, played it with our wives before breakfast, it's something that we do. I've played all of the various Azul games and I'll be giving you my thoughts on this particular one. I'll do a separate comparison video and ranking, but I will tell you that this does have the same annoying tower that to try and get out is a bit annoying. I wish they'd just gone for an extra bag. So there's a tower which we'll be putting some discards in, we'll talk about that later. There are some spare baggies, if you see my unboxing video you'll be aware of that too. It's a 2-4 to four player game, it takes a bit longer, it's more like an hour at least to play this version. It's about an hour, it does shorten over the various rounds. You're going to have to assemble this initially, so you're having a little spindle that goes through here. And you're going to line this up, so this will be round one, this is for your scoring. So hopefully you can see this, I am zoomed out a bit more, just to show you have everything in shot. So you have this, you are going to have your player board, so one per person is going to have a player board. If you want to see the theme for this game, you can do so in that unboxing video. That unboxing video not only gives you a bit of theme, it's the weighing video, it tells you what's all the components, with all nicely, neatly packed. And aside from that, you can also, from that, uh, discover a few more things, which is ultimately what is coming to the channel. So you're going to lay that out. Now, depending on the number of players, you're also going to get out of this uh, box here everything you're going to need. So the youngest player is going to take this piece, and they're going to be starting first. You're going to take these various expansion tiles and flip them over and give them a shuffle. You're then going to, depending on the number of players, distribute them out. So in this case, if we're playing as a two, we are going to, now this is a 5K, uh, 4K video, so you can actually pause, zoom in, and hopefully that's fine in terms of this detail. One, two, three, four, five. So you're gonna stack over here for round four. One, two, three, four, five for round three. And let's move them off to the side a bit. Again, I'll show you about the space. One, two, three, four, five. Again, they would normally be shuffled for round two. And one, two, three, four, five. That's for a two player game. If there's three players, you're gonna have a total of seven in those stacks. And if it's a four player, you're gonna have eight in those stacks. So you have 20 tiles in this expansion, otherwise you have 28 of these expansion tiles, or 32. So you have a player board here. Of course, there's more players, you need a bit more space. And let me show you how it works. Everything else, by the way, is gonna go in a separate stack. And inside here, you will find a minus six victory point token. Now, minus six reminds me of a few different games, one of them being Great Western Trail, whereby you can lose six to get something else. It's not the only game that does it. This game has a bit of Calico in it, a bit of other games such as, well, Cascadia, which kind of succeeded it, a bit of Summer Pavilion, which we'll get onto, and also a bit of other games such as Palace of Carrera, also by Michael Kiesling. Now, over the free player, it's always gonna take three Joker tiles. If you want to see my review on the Joker Tiles and the original Azul, you can do so on that video. If you want to see my review on Azul as well, it's the first edition that I have. I got it before, it was nominated for Spiel des Jahres. If you want to see any videos by, in the Spiel des Jahres category, you can do so by going to the playlist. There's over 80 playlists you can check out on the channel. Aside from that, you need to decide a colour. So of course, maybe starting that first player, you can decide which colour you wish to be. I happen to be grey, I'll just stick that over here. Now this is zero, you do not start on zero, you start on 15 victory points. You're going to place this little hexagonal marker here, that's later for scoring, which you don't need until the end of the game. And you do have these tokens, which you will need as you will pass 60 victory points. And because you start on 15, I don't think there's a problem with placing out straight away. They are colour coded, so you just grab the respective one for your colour. And for now, I won't bother using any of the other colours just to make sure it's a bit more clearer. Any other questions, you can check out the comments. If it's best, I would recommend you use YouTube. And just whilst I'm clearing all the rest of the stuff away, if you wish to support the channel, there's Patreon. There's Instagram, you can follow over 2,400 posts currently. There's also Linktree, there are occasionally competitions and giveaways. They are time sensitive, so please keep checking back. There's a lot more planned for this particular year, the year 2022. And this is in the abstrategy or the abstract category of games whereby it's combinatorial so there's no kind of luck there's no chance there's no dice there's no card flips and stuff like that okay so we've laid out our board we have three joker tiles i'll explain what they do in a moment we've also now placed everything else we need it's now down to what you're going to take so first thing we're going to do is laying out four of these tiles so we're going to pick one of these stacks let's just say it's this one it's going to have four tiles on them. The aim of the game is to get the most victory points, and in these four rounds, we're initially going to score based on if you have a purple tile, these flowers, and if there's any blue tiles you have, and something else which I'll get on to, then going into the second round, whereby we're scoring flowers, green, and petals, then we're scoring like lilac, butterflies, and dark green, and then we're scoring trees, yellow, and birds. 
Now there's something else I did mention on the score and I'll show you how that works in a second. Let me give an example of a round. So on your turn, you can do one of three things. You can either take one of these expansion tiles, which right now you can't do it, they're locked. You can take something off the top here and I'll explain how that works. So right now you've only got one option really, which is to take something. You can either take uh, the three birds, but you can't because right now going random, they are identical. If they're identical and there's three of each, you cannot take them. So you could take one green bird and one dark green bird, or you could choose just to take, uh, we can't take two green of these because in this instance, again, they're identical. So what you're gonna have to do is take one dark green bird and one petal. Sorry, one of these flower sheaf things instead of these wheat things, or you could just choose to take that on its own. So you could take this because it's unique and there's nothing else like it. If any more, you've got to take them as well. Or you could take uh, this bird with this because they're dark green. So let's just say we're taking those two. You have space for 12. If there's a chance you could take more and you haven't got space, you can't take it. So now what happens is this will now come off. It's quite cathartic, like Takedo. That pops off. This is now going to get stuff replenished on it. So chucking out four more things. Again, I'm going completely random, just as I would in a typical demo, as long as I haven't loaded the deck and uh, unnecessarily. And right now it's the other player's turn. So imagine it is my turn. I can either obviously pick something over here, but considering I'm scoring this, I might want to take a purple. That's actually very good because it'll score me twice. It'll score me one point for being a purple and six points for being a tulip leaf. I will zoom in briefly just to show you how that, that uh, scoring. So hopefully we can see how this looks. And if we, I don't think you need to zoom in anymore. I think that works. I think for time being, let's crack on and do another one. So it's my turn, let's say, to go again. And I could pick something off here. Again, this would populate off again. So we pick something off here and this new tower stack comes again. So we have one, two, three, four. And again, there's a blue one. Let's just say I want to take a blue. So now that pops off again. And now we're down to two stacks. So again, something's going to pop out on it. Chuck out four tiles. One, two, three, four. And uh, let's see what's scoring. Well, there's nothing really of interest. I'm going to zoom back out again, just to show you. And let's see what we want to pick. So we might want to pick... Let's think about it. Let's pick... Let me just make sure I put it quite nice and neat. Let's chuck this over here. Okay, so we are thinking what to pick. Let's pick in this instance, what matches here? Let's just go for something crazy. Let's go for yellow, just because we've got some yellows on the board. So one, two, three. So it's my turn again. I pick this one. So I've also got to pick this one as well, because it's the same. Now it fills up my board, but this also flips. So imagine it's my turn again. I could choose to play stuff out. I can only place it out in the center. And one thing I haven't put out yet is my central board, which I don't think is really necessary. Now I can take this tile. Why? Because there's space in my garden for it. In my garden party, I've got space for my little pavilion to go on here too. So now, what can I do? Well, it's the opponent's turn. And let's say they, they're still playing and doing stuff. If they haven't passed. If they passed, I'll take this first, which means they get first dibs next round. So, but uh, just a uh, quick clearing of the throat. <coughs> I'm now going to, obviously I can't take any tiles, because I've got any space. I can't take another of these boards. I could take one, it's gonna cost me six. And I must admit, I've never seen anyone take one of these because you're going blind to try and do it. So now let's say I wanna play some stuff out. So how do I score points? We score points based on the values that are on, as I said, but you also score points at the end of the game, again, depending on your total on here. And you're going to go score points based on how many you have. So if a set of three at the end of the game and they're all blue, then you'll be scoring points. If you haven't scored them for purple, I'll, I'll show you how that works in a second. So right now I'm going to play stuff out. I can place out whatever I want, but I might probably want to start with a purple. So let's say I do this here. So place this here. What is the cost to place this out? It is one, which is not very clear in the, in the rules because the English translation from German slips up in a few places. Um, so I'm placing out one tile. Now the cost to place it out is either or, not both, either placing out another in total. For this, it's going to cost me six. It's going to cost me six of these um, purple flowers. So either six purple or six flowers. Now I've got one. It counts as one. So I've only got five left to pay. Two, three, four, five, six. But I can't use the same thing twice. So I've been very lucky actually with all of my draws so far to show you all the things that could potentially, you know, break the game. So kind of covering all the rules, which is really handy. I can't do that. Instead, I could use the purple flowers. 
So these tulipy things, which is one, two, three, four, five, but I can't again use it because it's the same thing twice. So I can't place this out presently. So instead I might want to do something different. What else scores? Well, a different tulipy one over here. Uh, so we can place out this one. We place it out, it's gonna cost me six. That's one to place out one of them, the first one, two. And that's what you use the, cover of the tower for. So the tower is just gonna go out of the way. So that goes in here for one. We are then gonna place out the others. Two, three, so that's one. Two, the second one's going in. So three, four, five, six. And I've built it, it cost me six. So now it's my next turn. And, all right, great. And when all of a sudden I've got no greens left. So remember, you want to have groups of green, three at least for the end of the scoring, end game scoring. Uh, but remember, you could try and build them somewhere else. So instead, I might have to pick out something else. So what else do I have left? Well, I've got more green. So let's just take, uh, so, say, another green. So take that one. And there are other butterflies. So I can take some more butterflies. And that's fine. And now it's back to my turn again. So I could place that butterflies. Butterflies cost me three. So let's say I do that. So I bring out another green and now I have to pay it, obviously. So it's going to cost me three. So it's going to cost me one, two, because that's also butterflies. In this case, I'm going to spend my final joker three. Now you can get more jokers. If you surround your fountain, you're scoring yourself one extra joker back. So that goes back on your thing. It'll take up one of those 12 spaces. If you happen to completely surround a statue, you will need two more. It, just like in some pavilion, similar kind of mechanisms. And if you completely surround a pavilion, which we haven't done yet, you're gonna score yourself three victory points. So let me show you how that works. So I might just try and zoom in as a little bit more. Okay, I think that works best. Cool. So now it's back to my turn. I might wanna bring out more stuff. We have these blue things to try and score. We can bring out this. So let's bring out this, let's stick it somewhere else. It can go, it's gotta to be touching something that already we have though. So in this instance, we might want to think about something different. Let's bring out, um, what else do we have? Nothing much of interest. So let's just bring out this. This is gonna bring out that and it will give me these as well, let's just say, just to give me some variety. And what happens is these flip. So first we have we've got another tree that flips. We have got a purple flower that flips. And uh, let's have a look and see what else we want to bring out. So do we have any more um, butterflies? We've got no more butterflies. We have got these tulipy things here. So we've got one here, which doesn't work. So let's bring out this one and flip that over. Well, that, and that should have uh, had four more on it. I think I missed that off. Apologies if I did. So remember, whenever you reveal a new one, it's going to populate. So what do we have left? Let's consider this. Okay, so in this instance, I can only get this in here. So I'm gonna take this one, and it's the own, and there are some more wheat, um, which is a trouble because I can't place it out yet. So I've got to get this out, but I can't. So I've got to think of another way of getting that out. And so what I can do is take this and just say I'm gonna take only the dark green. So that's filled up my final spots, so I can't take any more. And as you'll play with other players, you'll notice, just like the original is all, I'm taking this, which means you can't, but also, it might be the case that I might want to lowball it and try and play other things first and let someone else completely clear these tiles and reveal the other side. As, as you can see, if someone's taking all these symbols, I can nab it off the board instead, which is much cheaper. So I'm now going to place this out and place it here, let's say. And again, it's going to cost me, it's going to cost me five. Can I afford it? Well, I haven't got any greens left, so I'm going to pay out five. One of these, like, ears of corn. One, two, three or I can't afford it. So in this instance, I can't afford it, so I've got it stuck there. And that is kind of that first round, very crunchy that first round. Uh, is there anything else I can take? There's nothing else I can take, there's nothing else I can play. And then you're gonna go for scoring for that first round. So firstly, how are we gonna score it? Well, we're looking at the colors. So how many dark purple do I have? None. How many of these? I've got six, so I get six victory points. So I'll go up to that one, up to 21. And then how many black blues? I've got nothing. Anything on here is fine. You're going to keep it to the next round. So in this instance, I've got tons left. And then you're going to move on to the next round. Maybe there was an opportunity I could have scored, but it's going to be too late if, again if I can't go out. So that new round's going to kick in again. And again, new things are going to come up. In this instance, I've only got one space and I need to be very conscious of obviously what's happening. So if you want to pass, obviously somebody else can still keep on going and they can take as many turns as they want to lowball it. Just take a, you know, let's say a wheat. Well, they could take 
I don't know, yellow, then they could take the bird. And then you're finally going to score if you've got any off pavilions. So let's say I did manage to get this out. I'll score myself one point. And at the end of the game, you might get five or six of those points available. So obviously they're going to they're going to multiply to get more and more because each round they're going to you know snowball in terms of effect. The first round you're going to get one. The second round you're going to get that one. Plus you might have another one. So then we move on to round two. So in round two, you again are going to have all these discarded. They're going to go away. These are going to go into that tower. And then what's going to happen is you're going to start and obviously the second round. So you're going to draw that first one and you're going to chuck out four more tiles and the bag hasn't emptied in prior games. And again, you're going to keep on going. So in this instance, uh, let's say they've taken a turn. Let's say they took this. I've got these things that, in fact, let's say they're taking only these purple, which might be to hinder me because right now I'm stuck. I'm trying to get out this thing. And to get this out, it's going to cost me one, two, three. I need another wheat. So right now I can't see a way of getting out wheat. Um, I, I might not be able to place out anything whatsoever, which again is a bit of a, a trick. So again, whilst you are watching this video, please ensure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and let me know your thoughts. And also, so right now I've pretty much mullered myself because I've gone for high value stuff, but it's not helping me. So that early six points was not worthwhile. So what you can do, you can discard these extra tiles to try and get more stuff in, but it's going to lose you minus points for each ones you do. And that's when you choose to pass, which means that's the end of the round for you. So good advice. Do not start with this kind of stuff at the beginning or it might be how it's drawn. So after all those really good lucky draws, it's actually obviously turned out terribly because right now, as you can see, I've got space for one more. Let's say I was able to take this one. I can do, what can I do? I can only take one, two, yeah, I can't place that out. This one's gonna cost me five and it's gonna be one, two, three, four. So again, I'm one away. I can't place anything out. And of course with the butterflies, butterflies cost me three, but I don't have any butterflies, that doesn't really help. So how's it work at the end of the game? At the end of the game, again, we're going to go through and you're going to do your final rounds of scoring. So obviously a total of four rounds. And then what's going to happen is you're going to go through all the blues. If you have a group of three blues, at least, let's say you happen to have, uh, you've got some garden expansions out, such as this one. Uh, you are now going to have, imagine you had this, this and this, then it's scorable because there's at least three items. So you're going to score yourself this, which is worth a tree, which is one. Birds are worth two and wheat is worth five. That's eight points. One, two, and five. That's eight points of blue. So you've up that. You do the same thing for purples, the same things with violets, the same things for yellows, light greens, and dark greens, and then doing trees. So if you're doing three trees next to each other, you're going to score that again. In this case, you're going to score the total. So maybe you've got a tree here, tree here, and a tree here. Let's do a fourth one. You're doing one, two, three, four times by the value of trees, which is one. So that's first four points. Whereas, of course, if you get six of the different, uh, obviously, types of tulipy things, that's 36 points. That's how the game goes. So as you can see, it's uh, there's an engine going on whereby you're trying to improve things. But at the same time, the engine self-destructs very quickly. Because as you try to get something out to go next to it, you've crippled the exact engine you're trying to use to get out. So very brain country. It's a heavy abstract strategy game. There is a lot to consider, and it's very easy to muck up things. Uh, points and resources extremely tight and precious in this game. Uh, like I said, no one seems to be touching these mice tiles. All you're doing is you're taking that and hopefully getting something you might need, which, as you can see, is the same type of thing, so it's a bit tricky like that. The way you try to burn off these things is obviously to do it separately. So maybe I'll pay this to get this out, and then I'll have to pay this to get this out, or something like that. Or let's say I want to go this out for two, I'll spend one, two and then suddenly this is kind of available to me again you will be scoring for uh scoring all your pavilions so each round you've got one of these out it's scoring your point at the end of the round so then round one it's going to be one of them if i happen to have two outs then obviously i'll be scoring two in every round they've got them out for you'll also remember you are getting joker points uh, joker tiles which are very useful for completing these things sometimes you just want to waste something so maybe you just want to chuck out i don't know let's say this here which is never a waste, it has to go next to it. And of course, I do score points. Uh, the tiles are fine. Uh, the, the pastel kind of shading is all right too. I think the yellow bag is fine. Again, I much would have preferred a separate bag. The size of the box is identical to Azul. Doesn't really make a big difference. Uh, the, like I said, I, didn't, I don't like this, this box here. There is, 
I mean, the joke tiles are fine. The, the boards are okay. They're a bit flimsy, just like in uh, Summer Pavilion. And I wish, you know, it'd be, it's quite easy to knock stuff because of the surface we have going on here. The use of colours uh, is, is fine, but a bit, I don't know, a bit bland. I don't know why they had to go for that. Also, let's talk about the birds. So the birds are easy to identify. There's a few things though, like the petals and the butterflies are a bit too close to home. So I wish they'd vary them a bit. The idea of having a lilac and a purple is a bit annoying as well. Uh, the box, I mean, it's, it's easy enough to fit everything in it, but I think they kind of overcomplicated it in certain areas. Uh, there are opportunities to get 180 and 240 point tokens, it seems possible, which uh, I'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I personally didn't do that well. I was a bit surprised. I thought I'd do better than I did, uh, but it wasn't obviously a round um, I did well at. I prefer the game at a lower player count just because of, I guess, that kind of decision space and depending on the players you're playing with. Again, even the board, it's a bit screed. Uh, they, their boards do get damaged very easily. I mean, two of them have already got this kind of ding, which you might just about notice. If I zoom in twice, you'll see that that is, you know, two of them have this. And that, that was actually after the first play with a different one. So two of them, after one play, happen to have this kind of damage. Bit of a shame. It's, uh, in terms of my rating, I think about 7.4 currently, which, yeah, I, th I kind of prefer a bit over... Some pavilion, I think it has a bit more beginning, a middle, and an end, a bit more of a second and a third act to it. But trying to think ahead as to what you're doing, I can see what um, people might think about the fact that you are really having to puzzle over it. There's not much player interaction typically, and you are having to constantly be thinking, Oh, can I play that? Does that work? And then, easy, even then, you go, Oh, okay, that's a bit of a shame how I'm doing it. So, there's a lot to be wary of I think is one way of putting it I think I'm not saying it's the death knell for us all by any means but a game whereby yeah you definitely need to be in that right zone to want to play an abstract strategy game for a continued amount of time and what I mean by that is just as they say real-time games shouldn't be longer than 15 minutes I can equally say there's a similar approach with this whereby when you play this do you really want to be committing yourself to be playing this particular game would there be other things. Now there is a variant as well, which I won't be talking about in this particular video. But if you are interested in other abstract foot strategy videos and at the other resort games, again, please look forward to checking out my comparison. And I'll tell you how I think they kind of fare and which one you think might be best for you. Aside from that, again, if you do have any other questions, please also check out the comments in case I've uh, goofed anywhere or you think I goofed. Hopefully I didn't. I don't think I did. And I have had uh, witnesses for uh, this particular video. And it was nice to give it a go. It was a game I picked up at the UK Games Expo. You might have seen my haul video. And I look forward to obviously bringing you other stuff soon. Aside from that, trying to get everything back in the box is a bit of a crunch, especially because of this horrible tower, which it's just maybe table presence I think they've gone with, but I wish they hadn't. I, I don't know if that's Sophie Gravel behind that idea. But again, I'm trying to have to do this kind of malarkey. There's nothing fun at all. That's the, that's another lowing for me. The board is fine when you twist these around, they don't tend to get stuck. Uh, obviously you need to be wary of who's gone first, make sure people have taken their turn and maybe see what they've done because they might flip something over and you might have spotted it. So this has been, I had a setup plane review for Azul at some pavilion. There's over 60 videos planned presently. I hope you found this of interest. Thanks for watching and back to the table.